spirits with you. Um, so now let's beer is from Pentridge Brew Brewing Company based in Derby. Um, this beer was brought at the Crafty Bar and Bottle Shop in Ilkeston. Basically it's like a, a little pub type environment where six bottles of beer, uh, six beers on draft. God, you can tell I've had a few beers. Um, two more on the front. Massive amount of craft beer in the fridges. So if you want to just go for a, a, a craft beer out of a fridge, you can. And uh, as you can see, lovely orange pour. This is a 4.8% pale ale with an untapped rating of 3.97% or 3.97, whatever that means. <laughs> Good evening again. And uh, no, no, mine looks a lot worse. Um, pale ale brewed with citra and mosaic. So we'll dive in. And... Uh, and again, um, I didn't think these were very good at holding carbonation, but again, oh, I can't show you. Actually, I can show you, well, I can tell you. So, let me go to Instagram. Let me click on the image. Right. So, for the Vedant, the Verdant, Seldom often the Imperial Stout. 8.5% uh, MP. For a pint, £7.40. For a half a pint, £3.70. For Pentridge Flat Circle Pale Ale, 4.8%. A pint is a fiver, so that's quite, you know, fair play. Uh, 254 half. The Verdant Remembering Things, 6% IPA. 6 quid. Pint, three quid off. Wild Weather, the Damn Dead Blueberry. Obviously, it's a sour, 4.2, £5.20 and £2.60, the prices. Uh, Alpha Delta, Galos, that was £7.40 for a pint, 7.2% though, or £3.70 for half. Yeah, no, I don't think they're bad prices. And to be honest, if I'm drinking, if I'm going to anywhere that does craft, I don't want a full pint. Because, one, the ABV is going to be bigger. So I'm going to get absolutely steaming. Two, I'm, I'm, for me as a beer drinker and a beer fan, I want to be drinking halves or even thirds. So I can get as many different beers in. Yeah. Uh, Beaver Town's Neck Oil, which I didn't really, I wasn't interested in. Sorry, Beaver Town, but I wasn't. Uh, £4.20 and two sixty. 260. Surely that should be 210. Mm. Yeah. I think that's wrong, that price. That last price, I think, is wrong. But, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't interested in neck oil. <laughs> no. Same glass, one does apologise. I'm not getting up for another glass. It looks the same as the last beer, to be fair, but uh, job's good. What I am impressed about with this bottle today is that it held carbonation. So as you can see, you look at that. That's poured nicely. Good evening. I don't I'm not, I wasn't keen on um, neck oil. Yeah. <laughs> I look at Beaver Town and I'm not... I'm not really a massive, knowledgeable person with regards to craft. I'm not, being honest. I know a lot about supermarket beers, mind you, but not so much about craft side of things. But neck oil, mm, no. Bought out by a big company. As, as always happens, big companies come in, they brew it cheaper, Quality's gone. The people that made it in the first place, they've gone. So, and, you know, the people that, um, that they've got for the beer aren't there anymore. And it happens all the time. So, Pentridge, flat circle. Got to say, cracking aroma. Cracking aroma. 
They have a brewery inside a football stadium. Which football stadium? Not Tottenham, surely. Is it Tottenham? I know Tottenham, Hotspur, have got a foot, or is it Arsenal? I've got a brewery inside a stadium. Good place to brew beer, though. I mean, you've got 60,000 vans coming in. Ah. Tispers, rightio. I, I remember seeing it. Well, fair play, really, if you think. Yeah, I mean, if it's a big club, brewing a decent, brewing craft beers, selling them beers to the, you know, all the football, uh, to the fans, not the footballers, um, is a good way of getting money in. So good, good strong nose on this. Pentridge brew quite the amount of beers. I've actually got one of theirs tomorrow. Yeah, let's hope so. I, 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 I really hope none of the Nottingham companies get brought out. Because it, it ruins companies. It is Spurs. I thought it was. Yeah, because I can remember when Spurs made their new ground. There was, a, there was a story about a brewery or something. Something ticked the raggy box. Yeah, yeah. And then I can't remember what the wife says to me 10 minutes ago. Hey, Jesus. Hey, that's why I get red cards. So. Football was on in 10 minutes, so I need to knock off quickly so people could go and watch their football. I'm not watching it, but um, I'm too busy doing other things. Well, he says, after I've drank this, after I've drank that, I probably won't, won't be watching any football. Sit down, watch TV, sod it. Nice bit of bite on the front end on this. Um, juicy, tropical. feels very boozy. I mean, it says here it's only 4.8%. This is hitting me worse than the 7.2% I've just drank. Um, is, that, is it a fact that it's the third one in and you, you're, you know, they do it, you stronger? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know. Or is it the fact that something in the taste hits you? Um Sometimes AB, ABV on beers and spirits and that, possibly. Um, if I'm drinking a spirit or a fermented spirit, like a Di 20% never get drunk on it, never. And yet, a 10% beer, and I can be steaming. It is strange. And sometimes sugar. If I'm drinking something that's a bit sugary, like a honey bourbon or a cherry bourbon, uh, they will not get, even if they're 40%, they, they will not get me drunk as as fast as what um, a dark rum at 40% would. It's ever so strange. Um, obviously, we're all made up very differently, so things get to us, some, some of us, quicker than others. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's... Um, I suppose it's the way we're made up as humans. Um, different beers get you. I mean, uh, still ciders absolutely pan me. I'll go to a beer festival and start on the still ciders, and I'm absolutely steaming. And uh, if uh, hopefully October's beer festival goes ahead in Nottingham, and uh, I shall not be going too heavy on the beers. I try, try, he says. Try and be good. Although, I think the Bullman coming down to do the beer review with me. Um, to, yeah, sometimes, if you haven't had enough, it's... Um, when Bullman came down, I'd had, had something to eat before I went out, although I did have a drink as well, because I was a bit nervous, to be fair. Um, you see somebody on the internet, doesn't mean you know them. You know, and uh, and we got on really well. A top class bloke. Um, and for some, for what we was drinking, I thought I did really well. You know, um, I know that after four or five pints, you start getting steaming, and that was, and that's on the days of like five percent, four percent beers. 
not bloody 15 percenters, 13 percent, 12 percent. And to say I lasted, I thought I'd done really well. And obviously, Bournemouth's probably a bit more of a seasoned beer man than I am. I mean, I can drink a lot when it comes to it, but, you know, um, not going out drinking. I can drink a lot at home, but that's in one particular environment. And not so much mixing different beers. We had nine, I think it was about nine different beers. I did a beer review on most of them. And um, apart from the first, which was a 6% um, mild, which I'm gutted now because it'd have been nice to get that beer review in. Good evening, James. How are you, matey? I think Scotland last night, from looking at it from a Scotland point of view, the Scottish players, their homework on England was bang on. They stopped England playing and did themselves a favour because now you have to win against Czechoslovakia, uh, Croatia. We only have to draw against Czechoslovakia. So in some ways, in some strange ways, has it helped both teams get through? You know, because if England had won last night, Scotland are out. So... A draw for Britain, for the two British teams, out of the three. I would think England, a draw, I think, is doable against Czechoslovakia, although they did beat Scotland 2-0. But on any given day, any given team can beat any given... You know, they can. You know, I mean, years ago, we'd never have thought that West Germany would wallop Brazil 7-1. I think there was good chances on both sides, to be fair. Um, I would like both teams to go through, and Wales, of course, into the knockout stage. That, that is the interesting part. Get us all into the knockout stage. Could you imagine? Uh, I don't know if it, if it could happen, but an England versus Scotland or versus Wales, one of the three. Two of the three meeting up in the final. I mean, if, if they had to hit the bar when he did, that would have gone in. And, uh, yeah, some strange substitutions as well. But let's be fair. Put any of us on the football pitch for 90 minutes. Uh, those on low wages... And not on not on fifty grand or hundred grand a week. You'd pay. You'd play. You'd play good. Yeah, Scotland, England did play poor last night, but Scotland's tactics were bang on. You can't fault the tactics. I didn't think it was going to be uh, an easy match. And see, the, the Scottish lads, a lot of them play in the Premiership, so they know the English lads. You know, the foreign teams don't know the English lads as much as. Scotland do. Scotland and Wales know England more, more Scotland as well probably, know English, the English lads more than anybody in the tournament. But a lot of teams, Scotland stopped England, a lot of teams will play their game, which will allow us to play our game. So you get a more, you get a different type of match. I mean, Spain will, play, if it was against Spain, they play, that they won't change their way. They'll play a passing way. I mean, let's be fair, we, we all want, well, me as a, you know, as a British person, I want all our teams to get into that next round. Yeah. We kick the arses of the foreigners. <coughs> but, um, so hopefully there'll be some interesting matches. Bloody foreigners. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the group of death, the Hungary, Portugal, France, Germany, um, one or two of them's probably going home. And if that's so, that opened that, that's one of the big ones out of the way. One of the big ones, maybe. Yeah, 
I mean, I remember when Ireland, Republic of Ireland, were the only team in year, in one of the competitions, and I was supporting them. But what you've got to think about is we're on an island. So England, Scotland, Wales, and also Northern Ireland to be fair. And Ireland, really, the five of us are separate to the rest of Europe. So it's nice when we can go over there and show them what it's like. Not that we do often, but, uh, you know, at least to get so far in a bloody tournament to be nice, you know. On any given day, with the right tactics, you can beat anyone, you know. Brian Clough showed it back in the late 70s that a standard team with players who play as a team can beat any other team. It's about doing your homework, who to, who to kill out the game, who to stop. You stop You stop certain players, it kills the flow of that team. And uh, Forrest did it back in the day. And we played on the ground as well. I don't like the BBC, mate. They're a bunch of wankers, part of my French. Yeah, I don't like the BBC. The BBC are the sort of people who let Jimmy Savile get away with what he got away with, and that just disgusts me. You know, it was they knew about it and they let him get away. They let him get away with putting kids on his knee. What company does that? And why are we still paying a TV license in the year 2021? Whoa. Bugs me. Absolutely bugs me. But that's just the back coming out of there. So, yeah. Right. The Charlie, yeah, he's come in. He's seen what his dad's doing. He's been out in the garden for now. He's not happy. Yeah. But it's good for him because he, he does his poos. So, you know, it, it's good for him. I meant to jump on Craig's Craig's live stream last night. I commented a couple of times. Don't ask me what I commented. I got a clue. I hope I wasn't abusive. Um, when I've had a drink, that other side of me comes out, the piss taking side. And uh, yeah, I'm a fucker for it. See you later, mate. So again, another draft beer. This time from Pentridge, flat circle, four point eight percent. And look at the carbonation all the way down here. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've got a really... For those that know the true person, they know that I'm never a nasty person, never horrible. But I can be crude. I have got... Uh, uh, oh, I can't, I've got a right sense of humour. And close to the bone sort of sense of humour. But never in, in never in a way that meaningly upsetting people and uh yeah the real raggy at least you know it's um i'm sure craig will find out when he comes in up in august yes black iris they they came from derby to nottingham they obviously realized that nottingham is a much better place than derby and uh, i've been there tonight today i've got nine new beers carpaco oh <laughs> um, yeah, I've been to Black Iris Brewery. It's in a right dodgy place in in um, in Radford. Yeah, not far away from the police station. Probably a good thing as well. Uh, but um, and they didn't recognise me as well, which is good. Which is an interesting thing because I only did a beer review from Black Iris Brewery two days beforehand, and uh, I got there. And no, no one looked at me or anything. And I thought, well, that's good. You know, because I go to some, I've gone to some brewery shops and straight away it's like, and they know you straight away. And, it, and I, I feel embarrassed. And today I went there and they didn't recognise me at all. Unless they did and they were very good about it. Yes, they have, yeah. 
Oh God, Nottingham. I tell you what, Nottingham has got so many good tap rooms. I mean, Black Iris, Liquid Light, Neon Raptor, uh, Magpie Brewery, Castle Rock, Blue Monkey, Lincoln Green, Alter Ego, Bang the Elephant. And that's just a small amount of the breweries. Some crackers, you know. And if, depends if you like just craft beer. For craft beer fans, Neon Raptor and Liquid Light and uh, Black Iris all day long. And Alter Ego for that matter. You see, Liquid Light's not far away from Neon Raptor. Yeah, it's about 200 yards away. Yeah. In another dodgy area as well, funnily enough. But, um, I was born in that area, so I know the, I know the dodgy side of things. You can spot the dodgy people a mile away. They usually wear grey with a hood up. <clears throat> in, the, the, in the middle of summer, they're walking around with hoods on, and you think to yourself, get that bloody hood off your face. Anyway, better kill this with you, because I've got to go back to the house and put the washing out and do some cleaning and uh, other lovely chores. No football tonight for me. Too busy working. The wife's done a back-in. She's been running, done the back in, so she's not well. I've cleaned the kitchen, done the washing, jet, uh, dishwashing, wiped all the sides down, as you do. And uh, she sat down watching TV. And I did dinner as well. Do you do the reviews beforehand? Or do you... Well, you know, I'm a modern bloke. You know, you do what you do. I like a clean house. And, uh, you know, these blokes who come home and think they don't do any work and let the wife do it all, that's not the me, no. Plus the fact that I can't sit down as well. The only time I sit down, funnily enough, is when I do beer reviews, which is, uh, which is something, isn't it? It's also a way of talking to the camera. Even when I'm doing non-live reviews, talk, talking and, you know, just giving it out there. I mean, I've got four, four, four beer hauls to do tomorrow. Four different videos. Um, yeah, yeah, I do get answers as well, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, the second sign of madness. Oh, God. I've been through all them stages. So, yeah, hazy, slightly orangish pour. The nose on this was absolutely amazing. Tropical Hoppy, and I've got to say Pentridge as a brewing company out of Derby, so it's a rival to where I live in Nottingham, but they do do some amazing beers. Their range of beers is stunning, and I'm open to God that I did not order this out of a can for tomorrow uh, for me, a Father's Day present from my youngest son, because uh, to do it draft and then do it out of a can would be a killer, but hey -oh. I'll still, I'll still do the review. Again, great tasting throughout. Good long lasting flavour. The last beer was 7.2%. That actually tasted like a 4.5%. I did say on the last review as well. This beer is slightly the other way around. It's 4.8%, but it tastes a hell of a lot stronger. Um, is that the beer winning or is it the fact that some beers taste stronger than what they are? It's an interesting concept. Beers do. Some beers do taste a hell of a lot stronger, even when you are totally sober, than what they are. Other beers taste a lot weaker than what they are. Good evening, Lee. How are you, mate? And it is interesting. Final review tonight... Mm. That, was, that was really nice I enjoyed that so this is from Verdant for later um, half a pint although I'm sure that the good fellow at the uh, the crafty bar and bottle shop in Ilkeston I'm sure that's not half a pint because that's 500 mils I, I think he overdid it but fair play to him he's a good bloke I can't fault him and uh, you're drinking Stout Perlman good on you Holston pills. Holston pills aren't too bad. Yeah, it's a bit more than half a pint. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> Good evening, Steve. So, 
just about to kill it. it well, it's not far off a full thing, is it? He obviously looked at me and thought, yeah, he looks a bit of a scruff. I'll give him a bit more. Bless him. And, uh, well, bless him as well. Um, so, Flat Circle Pentridge Brewing Company. Good nose, great taste throughout. The ABV I felt was stronger than the 4.8 it should have been. He didn't recognise me. No, no, we don't follow each other's on Instagram. I did check beforehand. Um, it probably might after I've mentioned his shop about 10 times. Scotch Ale. What's that one? Holston Pills to a Scotch Ale. Oh, do you mean the Pentridge? Snake Venom for 10 quid in... in in Morrison's, Jesus Christ, yeah, yeah, Pentridge, yeah, yeah, <laughs> 10 quid for snake venom, bloody hell, that's a 40 pound bottle for a tenner, they must have sent it to Morrison's by mistake, and people in Morrison's have got no clue, yeah, Jesus Christ, I'd love to get a bottle of that for 10 quid, wow, yeah, there'll be another review coming up, another long review, yeah, but watching England play, I might need a beer like that to, to settle the nerves. So, out of five for me, um, would I drink it again? Yes, I would, yeah, no doubt. Um, out of five, again, um, I really like this. For a low ABV beer, it was really nice. I'm in for a bollocking, been yakking too long. A good 4.5 out of five again. All these draft beers tonight, I've had four now. And um, four supposedly half pints, but uh, I won't complain. Um, and all of them have been brilliant. Top class, draft beers, top class. Another review coming later, probably about 11 o'clock. Will it be live? I'm not sure, but I will be reviewing it tonight. Father's Day tomorrow, so I can't be getting too drunk. Um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for watching, commenting, liking and subscribing. And we'll see you again. You never know when. Cheers. And thank you everyone for popping in. See you later. Right, bollocking time,